welcome to Health, Wellbeing and Lifestyle, where professionals in the field inform, educate and inspire the community to be healthier, more balanced and live the lifestyle they love. And today we have Sarah Kirishan in the studio, who is a barbecue cook and healthy food advocate. Welcome, Sarah. What have you got for us today? So I am a absolute barbecue fanatic. Um, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my fundamental rules when it comes to barbecuing, okay? So for me, I am a very, very busy person. I live a quite an active lifestyle and I love food. Number one, the food must always be delicious. So I, but for me, barbecuing makes it more delicious. There's that um, incredible flavor that you cannot describe that comes from a barbecue, especially when you cook over charcoal. The other thing is it has to be simple. Um, and of course, quick, that was the other point as well. So delicious, simple and quick. They are my, they're my three fundamentals to cooking on the barbecue. Do you wanna talk about what you've got here? Absolutely. So this is actually quite a special dish. When it comes to my beautiful snapper here, um, all I do is I, pop as many herbs as I possibly can inside um, because as it cooks they're going to infuse the flesh from the inside out. So herbs and lemon it's kind of that simple and then on the outside I usually make a few incisions in the fish and in this particular one I've just got some fennel and lemon and that's it. Again that beautiful gentle um, aniseed flavour of the fennel and the lemon complements the fish so beautifully and it keeps it really really light and fresh and that's what we want especially when we're having a delicious fish like this. Um, and then really it's as simple as just making sure the barbecue is hot enough. That's essential uh, because the last thing you want is the fish sticking to it and then you just pop it on there. Um, so what I, I love to serve my fish with is some sweet potatoes and of course complementing that with some grilled fennel as well because that's already in the fish and I just feel like it kind of ties it all in together. So I call it a kind of quick, easy, healthy take on fish and chips. Um, when it comes to cooking a delicious dish on the barbecue, there's three kind of core steps. So obviously selecting the food that you plan on cooking. Number two is of course cooking the amazing food. And number three, which is certainly most people's favorite, which is actually consuming it and serving it up. So when we're talking about selection of the, the ingredients that you're going to be cooking with, for me, especially when selecting a fish, ideally you do have a fish shop or a fishmonger that you can trust and ask a few questions about the freshness of it, where it comes from. So this is a snapper. When I look at a snapper, I think, okay, we always want the eyes to be quite clear and bright. If they're cloudy, it means it's probably been sitting there a little while. Uh, when it comes to the skin, you want it to be quite smooth and glossy, but um, not slimy. So they're kind of the two key tips to look for when selecting a fish, bright eyes and smooth skin. The next thing is, you know, so fennel, for example, most grain grocers will have beautiful fresh fennel. Um, one of my favorite things when selecting fennel is to make sure that the bulb is quite large. The next step is of course, cooking it. <laughs> so what we do is we stuff the fish, we put all of our beautiful herbs, maybe some fennel fronds in there. Um, we will slice the lemon and fennel quite thin. So if, if you have a mandolin, it's a lot easier to shave the fennel down. And then you'll pop a few incisions in the flesh. You wanna get quite low down so that you can um, get as much flesh as you can. Cut a few slices in there and that's when you'll pop a couple of slices of lemon and a few pieces of, of um, shaved fennel in there as well. It can be tricky. I know a lot of people might find it a little bit daunting to cook a fish on the barbecue because the first thing you think is the skin's probably going to stick to the barbecue. So I've got a few tips to remedy that. But what I would always suggest is to make sure the barbecue is extra hot. So when you put it on, it kind of sears and seals the skin um, as you pop it on the barbecue. The next one is to oil oil the skin as much as you can. Obviously, we wanna make sure that we have a balance between consuming too much oil and making sure the dish is still nice and healthy, but also making sure the fish doesn't stick. 
keep in mind a lot of that oil will cook off in the cooking process. Um, a lot of the amazing juices will drip down into the charcoal and then they will re-infuse the food, which makes it even more delicious. Um, and then with the sweet potato chips, they're so simple. You just slice them up, pop them on the barbecue, a little bit of oil, a little bit of salt, maybe some herbs if you like. Um, they take a few, probably about five minutes either side whereas the fish will take about 10 minutes either side. I like to try and keep it off super direct heat because we want it to cook all the way through. And then when you flip it, we obviously want to make sure that we've got a similar cooking time on the other side to make sure that fish is cooked perfectly. When it comes to flipping the fish, um, we don't want to move it around too much, otherwise that skin will slide off the fish. So usually I just get a big spatula. Um, I also get uh, some tongs to pop on the fish to maybe secure it a little bit. And you just slide the spatula under there and use your tongs just to gently flip it. Sarah, I'd love to hear your top barbecue tips. All right, there are quite a few. I will summarize it for this dish. Um, so when it comes to barbecuing, one thing to remember is it's not as prohibitive as it may seem. It can actually be quite quick and easy. And for the value for money in terms of, and the, the return on investment, the flavor, um, and also just that active process of cooking something outside is well worth um, the short and quite simple investment of time. So I like to cook over charcoal. I, the flavor is so much better, the heat distribution is phenomenal, and um, the way that it holds its heat for such a long time is really valuable to me when I'm cooking on the barbecue. The next step is to make sure that you use a, I prefer to use a natural fire lighter. The last thing you want is to taint the taste of the food that you're gonna be cooking on the barbecue. So always opt for a natural fire lighter. So the next step, what I did with this uh, snapper is I used some oak smoking chunks. So just before I pop the, um, the food on the barbecue, I pop a few smoking chunks uh, uh, among the charcoal. And then what you've got is this additional flavor explosion and it's just smoking up that food and it's infusing it with so much flavor. Thank you so much for sharing those really handy tips. If you want to learn more about Sarah and barbecue cooking and how to cook this incredible snapper, go to Sarah's webpage on our website at healthwellbeingandlifestyle.com.au. Now stay tuned because after the break we've got another guest and we'll be discussing another interesting topic. Stay tuned. After the break, we have international meditation teacher and coach Daniela Damore talking about personal evolution and conscious creating. Welcome back. We have international meditation teacher and coach Daniela Damore here to discuss the topic of personal evolution and conscious creation. Welcome, Daniela. Thank you. Thank you very much, Megan. Daniela, personal evolution and conscious creation, what does it really mean? Well, it's a big topic, really, and it's very popular at the moment, you know, with uh, especially after the movie The Secret and various things like that, Laws of Attraction. But really, what it means is in my belief, of course, uh, what it means is our own personal journey of evolution, you know, being the spiritual uh, beings, having this human experience, and how through using the creative, the universal creative energy to create into our lives, what we're doing is learning about our own power, our personal power. And the more and more we learn about our personal power, then the more we are evolving as these spiritual beings, right? Yeah, so it seems like a very complex, very deep topic, and it kind of is, but really at its core, the simplicity of this beautiful topic is just to remember that we are creators. We are creators, like if the creator created universes, created this world, created us, therefore in the likeness of, of it, therefore we're creators, right? So when we're creating, we are honoring that universal energy, whatever that is for you, whether you call it God or Buddha or whatever you want to call it. 
Whereas when we're not allowing ourselves to create through uh, fears, various fears and doubts and insecurities, then we're really not honouring the Creator and therefore not honouring ourselves. So the more and more we can honour that in ourselves and take that power back, it's not selfish to do that. I think a lot of people think, oh, but I'm being selfish if I do that. No, you're, you're not being selfish because to love yourself and to honor yourself, then you are, you know your power, you know who you are. And I think what happens then is we become kinder and more compassionate people. Daniela, how could we apply this in our everyday life? Well, you already do. You already do, whether you're conscious of it or not. And that's why I say conscious creating is about becoming conscious of what you do. And that, again, is about taking that personal power back and saying, oh, I'm creating this because I'm angry today or I'm upset today or I'm happy today. You know, we create all the time. Everything you have in your life right now, every single thing, you created it. Now, most of the things that we have in our life right now are good things are really positive things, right? But we tend to focus on the things that are lacking or we don't have, right? So we think life's hard. And when we understand that we have the power to create things in our life, we stop blaming people. We stop pointing the finger. Well, I'm like this because of my parents, the government, you know, whoever, right? We, we stop doing that because we're owning our power. So it is, it comes down to basically self-responsibility. And when we're responsible for all of the thoughts and actions that we take, that makes us powerful. Makes us powerful. And we're powerful because we know who we are. We know what we want. We know what we like and what we don't like. And I guarantee, despite the more than 8 billion people on the planet, we all have different likes and dislikes. Not everybody wants the same thing. And even if they are, even if they do want something similar, it's not going to be exactly the same. The, the beauty of that is you put your personal stamp on that. You're going to create it your way and that's the beauty and the world obviously needs it. So it does come down to self-belief, but we have a self-belief when we know that we are part of this immense, enormous, creative universe. And again, whatever you prefer to call it, and that we are born of that and we have that within us and we have that magic, we have that power to create what we need to create. And the more and more we know that, the more and more we live that, the more and more we align with that, then the more we are evolving as beings. For the viewers at home, where's a good place to start? Good place to start is to check in with themselves. So whenever anything is happening, good or bad again, just stop and check in with yourself and just say, how am I feeling right now? Because even when we're creating good stuff, you want to check in and, and ask yourself, how am I feeling right now? Because you want more of that, don't you? You want to feel that more and more. What, how am I feeling? What am I thinking? What are the sensations going on? How is my body feeling? What's showing up in my life right now, right? Good, I want more of that. And the same when it's not going as positive as you'd like it to go or there's situations, circumstances in your life that you'd like to change, stop. Just stop. Take a deep breath, check in with yourself and say, how am I feeling? What, what is happening within me? And let it come out and you'll probably find that there's always some kind of fear, some doubt, insecurity that's there. And that turns into, you know, fear. Nothing good comes from that really. Right. So if we can come from a place where we're loving the moment, a lot of good is going to come from that. So the more and more we can stop and ask ourselves, how am I feeling right now? Like what's going on within me and be totally honest, then the sooner we're going to get through whatever it is we're going through and get to the other side where we can start creating, you know, much more positive um, results or situations in our life. But not only that, we'll also look better, I think. We won't look so stressed and tired and frustrated, you know, and it just makes us happier people, right? Because the more and more we're in a calm place, the happier we are. And so again, we're going to make better decisions for ourselves. And from making those decisions, then we take action and we take positive action, which is going to result in positive, um, you know, results, basically. So whereas if we make decisions from a fear standpoint, which under the heading of fear is lots of, you know, different uncomfortable situations, um, 
then if we make decisions from there and take actions from there, then the result cannot be uh, positive. You cannot have a positive result from a not positive journey. <laughs> you know what I mean? A negative journey will not provide a positive result. So it's along the way and we're always going to have that little setback. You know, you might be going along going, yes, 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 and punch in the air and going, I've got it, I've got it. And then something will happen. Someone will say something to you, something will happen and immediately we go straight into that autopilot, into that default. Oh, I'm not good enough or I'm scared or you're not feeling safe or whatever it is that triggers you. But becoming conscious about that, you know how to move through that faster. You're not going to sit in it, not going to stay in it uh, as, as long as you probably would and blame someone else. Daniela, that's such valuable information. Thank you so much. Yeah, sure. If you'd like to know more about Daniela and personal evolution and conscious creation, please go to her webpage on our website, healthwellbeingandlifestyle.com.au. And after the break, we'll have another interesting guest with another interesting topic. After the break, breathwork expert and life coach, Christine Hart Savage, will be talking about reversing stress and burnout. Welcome back. And our next guest is breathwork and life coach, Christine Hart Savage. And the topic we'll be discussing today is reversing stress and burnout. Welcome, Christine. Thank you for having me again, Megan. Christine, can you describe stress and burnout for us? They're, they're two different things. So stress is something that builds up inside your body. So we often don't know we're, we're stressed. So we go out into the world, and something happens that we don't like or we're uncomfortable about it. And instead of allowing that emotion and or expressing ourselves well, we tend to go into a little bit of shock and hold our breath a little bit. And whatever's going on at the time, that emotion we're feeling, the thoughts that we're having, when we hold our breath, it gets trapped inside the body. So then we go home and the next morning we get up, we go back out into life and we have some other stressful things happen and it starts to accumulate in the body. So stress literally builds inside us, it builds in the body and the cells, the cellular memory holds it. And if we think of stress as an energy, so we've got life force or energy flowing through us and every time we have a stress moment, it's like that part of that energy becomes crystallized. It becomes like a little marble that is blocked inside the body. So that builds up. So in the end, we can feel like the stress has got to such a point that we are a pressure cooker. So burnout is when the stress keeps building and building and building and building and building to the point where you are really full. That is burnout. Now that's very serious because if we don't do something about burnout or stress at that point, we end up getting sick. And the other thing that can happen is when someone's really at burnout or breakdown point, as I call it, we're so reactive. It's like, bah! it just comes up and these bursts, these outbursts take us over. So we're very emotionally charged. So we need to bring that down too, because not only is it not good for our health, it's no good for the people around us. Christine, can burnout happen to anyone? De most definitely. The thing with burnout too, strong people keep soldiering on. So we feel some stress, some pressure, and you wake up, you say, okay, you push it over there, and you just get on with the day, next day, the following day, and as it's building and building, you get to a point where it's almost impossible to keep going but strong people do. They keep pushing through it. I can do this and they don't get help. I find that the people that I see mostly for this burnout, that when they've got to this point where they really are not coping, are people that run their own businesses, lawyers, uh, doctors as well, and people that really are very professional because they keep going and going and going. Even university professors I've had, they don't know where to turn, they don't know what to do. And the other thing with this, when we can have burnout or really strong anxiety and panic attacks, it's often people in the media. 
So people that are on television that are really confident and, and they're great, you would never think that they're suffering from burnout or panic. Also people like radio jocks that are on radio that are out there, that are funny, that are speaking to people. In, on a break, they might have to run into the toilet and try and get their breath because they're having panic attacks. So it, it can affect anybody. It doesn't matter where they're from, who they are, what they do in life. Burnout is a build-up of stress in the body and the mind. Christine, is there anything you recommend that people can do if they believe they're experiencing burnout or tips and tricks on how to prevent burnout? When we have burnout, the stress is built up to such a point that in the end you have separated off from yourself. So you're disconnecting from who you are, you're disconnecting from yourself. Now when that happens, you're also disconnecting from the people in your life. You're disconnecting from the world, basically. So it's a very lonely journey. And it's because we're blocked. We've got all of this stress in the way. So what we need to do, when you get to this point of burnout, we need to do a deeper type of releasing. So there's two things that I would suggest people do. One is something like a deeper sort of breathwork therapy. So that's a deeper process of breathing where it takes you into an altered state of consciousness. You, get, you go beyond your conscious mind and your body relaxes like crazy because as you're breathing, your energy field is opening up, opening up, opening up. That means every cell inside you is taking on new energy and oxygen and that is also unfolding and opening up and all the blockages caught in those cells then start to be released. So the person will experience different tensions and tingling and vibration and maybe emotion coming up. And every time they do this type of session, they're releasing more of that tension. So that means they're reconnecting with themselves again, bit by bit. It's a very powerful way to release what you have built up inside the cellular level of the body. Our bodies are so intelligent. Our minds are intelligent but we're quite blocked. The thing that I find is that we're fragmented. So the mind is saying one thing, the emotions are something else, the body's intention, and the soul or the spirit is, we're all out of whack. When you do deep breathwork therapy, it brings you more into alignment. That's why people feel this incredible calm come over them towards the end of the session, because they're lining up between their spirit or soul, their mind, their emotions, and their body. And when they leave, they can go out into the world feeling much more relaxed and much more connected to themselves and in balance. So that type of therapy is what people need to start releasing that deeper cellular level of burnout. We need to really reverse that burnout. And then as well as that, I would suggest people have a daily program and they definitely need to learn to breathe correctly so they need to find a good breathing coach and I know one of those <laughs> <laughs> and also have a meditation program as well. So that might sound like a lot but it's not. Thanks Christine for such wonderful stories and wonderful information. Thank you Megan, it's always a pleasure to be here. If you'd like to know more about reversing stress and burnout and Christine Hart Savage, go to her webpage on our website, healthwellbeingandlifestyle.com.au. And that's it for today, and we'll say bye bye until next week. If you'd like to know more about our show, please like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel.